Hello and welcome. We've made a lot of progress so far. In the previous video, we learned how to switch our weapon. And in this video, I'm going to add the ragdoll to our character and do some other optimization. So finally, we could start the networking in the next video. Now to start, I'm going to add a ragdoll to my character. So when you have a character selected and it has a skeleton, you can right click on it and go to 3D and select Ragdoll and now you need to assign the bones so let's go to the skeleton and the name of this bones could be different for different characters but they're the same bone so they exist within every character skeleton so for the pelvis let's choose the hips and now for the left leg let's go to the foot and that is the foot that is the knee and that is the left hip so we're gonna do the same thing for the right leg that is the foot and the knee and right hips now let's go to the spine and chest upper chest and that is going to be our head under the neck I'm just going to choose spine as the middle spine. Now only hands left. Let's go to the left shoulder and let's choose the lower arm for the left elbow and upper arm for left arm. And the same thing under the right shoulder. So elbow and right arm. Now I'm going to click create and it is going to create a ragdoll for my character so if i take a look at the character you see that there is a bunch of capsule collider and box colliders on my character now so i'm gonna adjust them a little bit so let's start with the right elbow i'm just going to change the radius a little bit okay that is good and let's also change the height of this collider that is good enough so you can play around with these colliders and adjust them to a better fit on the character so let's also change the radius for that and and we can change the legs too that is the left leg so changing the radius and let's do the right leg as well and that should be for the right knee so you get the idea you can just adjust those colliders now let's open the character script inside the scripts folder so i am going to create a string here as the id of this character the same thing we did with our items i'm going to do for my character so we could access our character prefabs using prefab manager so if I go to the prefab manager, I can create another array of characters and let's also change the items to private serialized field. And then we can create something similar to get item prefab. So we can just copy that and paste it here. It is going to return a character and I'm going to name it get character prefab. And instead of looping through items, we can loop through our characters so we can replace items with characters inside this function so now for the ragdoll let's go ahead and create two variables inside character script i am going to name them ragdoll rigid bodies and ragdoll colliders it is an array of rigid body and array of colliders so we could get the values for them inside the awake function by saying ragdoll rigid bodies is going to get component and children and the same thing for the colliders it is going to get components in the children so if our rigid bodies is not null which means we found a bunch of rigid bodies then we're going to loop through them and we're going to multiply the rigid bodies mass in a number like 50 because we want to give our character a little bit weight so we want it to be heavy we don't want it to just jump around with a small push and uh, also for the colliders we're going to check to see if it is not null then we're going to loop through it and set is trigger to false for all of them 
Now let's create a function here, name it set ragdoll status. And here in the awake function, after we do that, we are going to set ragdoll status to false. To do that, all we need to do is change the rigid body as kinematic. So we're going to loop through the rigid bodies and set is kinematic to reverse of enabled the boolean that we are passing. So if enable is true, rigid body is a start affecting the character. So in the character, let's also create a float or an integer. Let's do a float, call it health. And if you remember in the previous videos, I think we created an apply damage. Yep, here it is. We could check if health is greater than zero. Then we're going to apply the damage and check the health again. If the health is less or equal than zero, then we're going to set the health to zero just in case it's less than zero. And we are going to enable the ragdoll. Then we are going to destroy the rig manager. We are going to destroy the rig builder, which is also attached to the character. We're going to destroy the animator. We are going to check for a third person controller on our game object. If there is one, then we're going to destroy it. Also, we are going to check for a character controller and we're going to destroy that too. And finally, we're just going to destroy the character script. Now let's go to the Unity editor and create a layer here in the add a layer. So I'm going to choose a name. Let's call it player. Maybe even let's say local player. Let's now go to our scripts folder here in the character. I'm going to create a new function. Let's say set layer and it is going to take a transform and the layer and it is going to set that transforms layer to that plus all the children of that transform. So for now, we have only one character. So inside the, let's say, start function, maybe. So we don't have a start function. Let's actually create the start function. Here we go. For now, I'm just gonna set the layer of the transform to local player. So we're gonna change it to an integer using layer mask name to layer. And if we go back to the unity and select the camera manager, as you can see inside the aim layer, it's on default. But when the game starts, we're going to set the players layer on local. So the camera manager is going to ignore that. So that's good because we just attached a rigid body, which is a bunch of colliders now on the player and we don't want the camera to collide with them. Let's check it out. Okay, we are good to go. Let's select our player. You see that the layer is on local player. So let's stop this. Now if I select the player, let's actually put it on default. Yes, for all the children. And while we are here, let's name this to anything you want. I'm just name it bot. And let's also change the ID, which we created in the character. I'm going to choose bot at the ID for this character. Now inside the prefabs, let's create a folder, name it characters. And that's our character original prefab inside the prefab manager. We've created characters. We can just assign the prefab here. Now let's go back to the character. I don't like the way that I left the change weapon script. It was too messy. So let's go and fix that here in the change weapon. Let's create another function here. Call it next weapon. And that is the previous weapon. For the next weapon, let's create a first index and current index. And then I am going to look through the items. If the item is not null and item type is weapon, in that case, if it's the same weapon that I have and our weapon is not equals to null, in that case, we're going to set the current. Otherwise, we are just going to check the current. Well, actually, if the current is greater or equal than zero, we immediately going to equip the weapon. And if the first is not assigned yet, we're going to assign the first. And then here we are going to check for the first. And if it's greater than zero, we're going to equip weapon as first. 
Now for the previous, we are going to define a last and a current. And for the items, we're gonna do a loop, but instead of doing I++, we're gonna do I minus minus, which means we're gonna start from items count minus one for I's greater or equal than zero. And then we're gonna check the item. We are going to make sure the weapon is not equals to null. And if it is our current weapon, we're gonna set the index for it. Otherwise, we're gonna go to the else. Now here we are going to say if current greater or equal than zero, then we're gonna equip it immediately. Otherwise, if last less than zero, we're gonna set the last. And here finally at the end, we are going to check the last. And if it is greater or equal than zero, we're gonna equip that. And for the change weapon, we no longer need all of that. So let's clear everything. So we're gonna say if x greater than zero, we're gonna go to the next weapon. And otherwise we're gonna go to the previous weapon. Now let's also for now temporarily create a public boolean and name it is local player. And uh, let's check here when we are setting the game object layer. I'm going to check if it is the local player, then let's set this one. And that's it. We don't want to do it for other players. So let's go and check this out. I am going to duplicate this character. So this one is going to be the local player. So I'm going to check that the other one is going to uncheck that. So for the one that is not the local player, let's also disable the third person controller, character controller, and maybe this one, this one, and the input. So if I move it somewhere around here, now let's test this. Okay, we have a second player now, and it is kind of weird. It's probably the aim target. Let me actually go to the project tiles and here I am going to change the speed to maybe 700 meters per second. And for the weapons, let's choose a high damage, let's say 20 for this one and 30 for this one. Let's try again. Let's reload first. So, yep, the ragdoll works. It's a little bit weird but we can fix that later. Now let's move on. We need to move our variables from the third person controller to our character script. So the variables we need to move are pretty much here. So we need to move that one, that one, this, and basically all of them. Let's just cut them all. So we're going to fix the errors later. So. Let's go to the character and here I am going to just paste them over there. I am also add a new variable here, call it grounded. And it has a public getter called is grounded. So we can get and set the value for it. Let's set a public getter and setter for walking as well. And for our speed animation multiplier, we're gonna do a public getter for that as well. We don't need a setter for that one. Let's do a getter and setter for the aiming too. And let's do that for the sprinting as well. So we have that and let's do a aim target as well. So I am going to create a private aim target and also a public aim target, which has a getter and setter. Now let's go to the third person controller and let's see what this all errors are. So instead of aiming, we're going to say character dot aiming and the same thing we could do for our sprinting. So basically let's do all the aiming first. Here we go. That's another one. So that's another one. Well, actually we need to copy these lines as well. So Let's actually grab them. We don't need that camera manager. Basically, we don't need to call camera manager at all inside of character. So we don't do that. But let's get these values up until here. So I'm going to cut that, bring it to character. So do we have an update function? Nope. Let's create it. Here is our update and I'm going to paste them here. Let's go back. 
Well, actually, let's copy that and bring it here. And now let's go and delete these two lines. And instead of rig manager, I'm gonna say character dot aim target. So for this one, this is gonna be character dot walking equals to reverse character walking. And this is going to be character sprinting and also walking. Now let's also copy this. We're not gonna cut it. We're just gonna take a copy of it, bring it here. And let's go back and just remove this multipliers. Just leave the target speed though. And here, let's cut that, bring it here. So we're gonna set the target speed like that. Also here, let's cut all of that, bring it here. So back to the third person controller for the shoot. Let's leave it here. I'm just gonna say character dot aiming for that one. At the end, let's say character is grounded equals to controller is grounded. And uh, let's also bring these two down here to organize the code. So that's it. Now let's take a look here. I think we're done. We still have a couple of errors down there. Character done aiming here. And the other one, let's say character dot speed animation multiplier and character dot aiming. So that's it for the third person controller. Let's go to the character. Let's create a Boolean for armed. So this is going to be aiming and switching weapon. Here we go. That's it. Instead of this, we have a uh, grounded and also we have a weapon here. So pretty much we have all the variables here. Now we move them from the third person character controller. So later on, we could sync the data over the network easier. So we have that if we are walking we have this and that so we also need to change the speed x and the speed y in the animator we used to do it using the input move but over the network it's gonna be complicated to pass the input move so i'm gonna do it a different way so later on we could even do a npcs in the game so i'm gonna create a last position this is a vector 3 and I'm gonna set the last position inside the late update. So last position equals to transform dot position. So I am going to calculate a delta position now using the transform inverse transform direction. So this is gonna take direction from the world to local. I'm going to say transform position minus last position and I'm gonna normalize that. And here, instead of just passing input move that normalize, I am going to pass a new vector two using delta position X and Z as the values for it. So let's also bring these set float animators down here. We have one final error, I think. What is it? Here it is. Speed change rate. Let's just use 10 doesn't matter so and here we don't need any camera manager reference inside our character instead of rig manager aim target equals to that we're gonna say equals to aim target which is the private aim target we created here and we are assigning that here in the update function of the third person controller so we're gonna do it like that and that's it Let's hope we didn't broke anything. So I noticed something. Let's go to the project tile. So to make sure our bullet impact is not getting instantiated on a player ragdoll, let's make sure to check to see if the layer is not local player. So let me cut that and bring it here. So let's also do another condition. I'm gonna use and layer is also not equals to network player 
which in the character let's go ahead and here we say else we are going to set the layer to the network player so let's also go and add this in the unity so here we go i am going to add another layer and it is going to be network player and let's select the camera manager and here say default plus network player so we're going to check that as well so that should be it let's play and make sure we didn't broke anything so it is working yep it is working fine let's also shoot this guy yep everything's fine now let's also create a script i'm gonna name this one canvas manager so that's gonna handle our ui for now i'm just gonna leave it empty we're gonna write the code for it later in the next videos let's add unity engine dot ui and leave it so in the game in the managers i'm gonna create a ui canvas and this canvas is going to have a canvas manager on it and let's change the canvas scalar scale with screen 90 20 10 80 and i am going to go to the 2d and here in the canvas let's add a small image the center of the screen and i am going to choose a knob this is just temporarily as a crosshair that should be good enough so finally the basics is over and from the next video we can start doing the networking so i'm gonna finish the video right over here and hopefully in the next video things are gonna get interesting i hope you enjoyed the video so far make sure to like and subscribe to the channel thanks for watching